Well, good morning and welcome to the Breastplate Prayer Devotional. I am your host, Bishop Larry Jackson. Well, guys, we're behind the veil and we're deep in there behind the veil now. We've looked at the Day of Atonement and all that Aaron did as far as bringing forth the sacrifice for the people. We've looked at all of that. We've come all the way through the fact now um, of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 1 through 10. And we've looked at how all of that has worked together, and we're looking at the Day of Reformation, but we found out something, that the blood of bulls and goats so far, we that's what we found out, could not make the one who did the service perfect, talking of Aaron, or cleanse his conscience, um, talking of Aaron, but it did provide a substitute for the errors of the people in Hebrews 9 and 7, but he says, um, which offered for himself, Aaron offered the blood for himself and for the errors of the people. But we realized that we needed a greater sacrifice. And so since the animals couldn't save man, God sent for Jesus, the Lamb of God, into the earth and um, so that he could now um, give his life and pour out his soul, his blood unto sin so that man could be be free. And so then we started looking at this whole Lamb of God issue. Because again, I said many times we hear people preaching on the Lamb of God and we say yes to it, and we have never really studied the scriptures ourselves to look at it. And John is the one, um, in St. John 1 and 29, and then St. John 1 and 36 is where we see um, the fact that John identified Jesus as the Lamb of God. And in verse 29, he says, the one that will take away the sin of the world, of the entire world. Okay, And notice it's not sins of the world. It's the sin of the world. And most people don't know what that one sin is. It's one sin. Matter of fact, it is the sin, as the Bible says in Hebrews, that does so easily beset us. The one sin. It says, and the sin that does so, not sins, and not the sins of the world. Okay? It is one sin that caused man to sin. Okay? One sin that caused man to go into multiple sins. What in the world could that be, Bishop Jackson? <laughs> well, we found it in Genesis when Genesis in Genesis when Adam separated himself and hid himself from God, the and ran and put on fig leaves. What was the sin? He was hiding from God. The sin was broken fellowship with God. The, the sin is that so easily beset us is the sin that will cause us to leave the things of God and do what we want on our own, the separation from God. <laughs> and so Jesus came to bring us back to God. Matter of fact, to reconcile the world, the Bible says, unto God in 2 Corinthians 5 and 18 and 19. So Jesus is in God reconciling the world unto himself. Okay, so that we might be accepted in the beloved, the Bible says in he in Ephesians chapter one. So we may be accepted in the beloved. So we stop we stop at Revelation chapter five, verse six, as we were looking at the Lamb of God. So let's go back there. And it says, And I beheld and ho in and lo in the midst of the throne and the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, which <laughs> sent forth into all the earth. Now, we clearly understand, y'all, that these seven spirits and the seven the sevens are had to do with what? That seven branch candlestick, man. So we know that it's speaking of Jesus as well, that seven branch candlestick. But this lamb stood in it as it had been slain. Okay, and so it had been slain where? On the cross, which represents the brazing altar in our in our study. So Jesus was slain on there, but he stood in the midst of the throne. Okay, and where is the throne? Behind the veil. Okay, remember that Jesus told Mary when she discovered who he was at the tomb. And she was holding on to him. Matter of fact, he said, sister, not the, 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 the translation of don't touch me is not accurate. It says, actually, don't hold on to me. OK, don't try to hold me here for I have not ascended to my father. OK, and so why was he ascending to the father? so that he could present his blood himself as the lamb slain so that he could take his seat on that mercy seat. 
and satisfy the justice and righteousness of God for all of the world and say to God, a man has now done what you said and had lived the life that you have said. And now I bring man back to you. And that's how we got there. Come on, somebody. Um, Revelation 7 and 17 said, For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them into um, living fountains of water and shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Who's doing this, guys? It's the lamb that's doing this. Revelation chapter 14, verse 10 says, The same, why well, it shall drink of the wine of the raft of God, which is poured out without mixture into a cup of indignation. And he shall be tormented with the fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. Wow. That's the judgment that shall come. And he says, who shall be there? The holy angels, but not only the holy angels, the lamb. The lamb will be there because the lamb will be the, be the exact thing that will say, you had a way out, but you didn't take it. Okay. Revelation chapter 15 says, and they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God and the song of the lamb saying great and marvelous are thy works. Lord God almighty, just and true are thy ways. Thou king of saints, my goodness, just and true man. There is satisfied by the song of the lamb. Not only did they sing the song of Moses, they sung the song of the lamb. What was the last thing they sung? The song of the lamb, because that's the proper order. Sinai first, Zion second. Okay. Revelations 19 and 9, it nine, says, um, and he says unto them, right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the lamb. And he says unto them, these are the true sayings of God. And so who are called to the marriage supper of the lamb? Those that will marry the lamb. Those that are one with the lamb. And that is us in Jesus' name. Revelation 21 and 22 says, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Oh, my Lord. So now he's making this relationship between not only the Jesus, uh, but also, watch this, he's making it with the temple that was made here. He said, there is no temple in heaven. And I told you that there is a tabernacle that was pitched, but there was no temple. Why? Because they are the temple. We run into them and we are safe. We run into the Lord and we are saved. He says, the Lord God and the lamb are the temple of it. My God. Revelation 21 and 23. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of the Lord did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. My Lord, for out of his being comes light. And it says that there, and the Bible says, in him there is no shadow of turning. What is saying there? There are no shadows in, in heaven. You will not find one shadow in heaven. Everything in heaven, glory to God, has the penetrating light of Jesus piercing through it. And if light passed through a thing, it can't cast a shadow. <laughs> there is no shadow because light is on the other side. Shadows are cast because the light can't penetrate through. And so the light that we're dealing with is not a pure light. Even the light of the sun is not a pure light because it doesn't penetrate through and it casts shadow. So in the midst of light, there is darkness. You can, <laughs> In the midst of light, there is darkness. You can find darkness because shadows are dark. Okay. Wow. Look, Revelation 22 and 1, he said, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the lamb. So the lamb has a throne sitting on the throne with God. We know he's at the right hand of the throne of God. Okay. And Revelation 22 and 3, and it says, and there, wa and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him. Okay, so now there are no more curses when we get to that day of the reigning of the lamb on his throne. Okay, now I'm going to literally stop right there and I'm going to stop a little early today because I want to make sure 
that you still understand that you need your breastplate prayer journal. You need to go and grab one from bishoplarryjackson.com. If you have not been with me and you're just hearing this, you need to go back and look at all of this and you can find that at my website, the church website at BethelOIC.church. And you can find the messages, but you can also download our church's app. And when you download the app, there you will find everything you need um, for um, the study. Matter of fact, it's far more. You can bend for months on all of the messages that are provided there for you. Okay. So we bless you though. And we thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. When we come back, when we come back, we will be dealing with the redemption through the blood, through this lamb's blood, the redemption that you now have by way of him going behind the veil and making him a place for you so that his blood would now provide healing and provide freedom from the sin that so easily beset us. God bless you. Have a great one. Bye-bye.